Okay, I'm back. Um, now this is a true confession. I don't really, sometimes when I do projects, I don't know what moderation means. And so I kind of got carried away. Elena, hello Elena, inspired me because she wanted lace. And so, you know, oh no, I can't put together one pack of lace. There's lots I could do. And so I had these tins. None of them are perfect. They all have like little flaws like tape or, you know, age or whatever. But there's something about getting a container full of something in the mail or at a sale and you don't really you didn't dig through it and you come home or you get it open the package and it's just to go through it and find it all and discover it all it's so much fun and i thought that's how i want to do these now when i put these together okay i just put these together now or yesterday and <laughs> i didn't go oh this one has this and so this one gets that i just kind of randomly put stuff in here so they will each be priced um, according to what's in here value wise and since I you know since the shipping's included it's not really free it's included I'm gonna be honest I know what I need for things and then I just add the shipping on there um, the the prices will vary on these and they will each have their own listing and I'm gonna actually take my time and open these up and dig through them right now with you I don't even remember what I put in them so forgive me if I come across as like this little you know like didn't she know she put that together so you'll have to forgive me so we will start with the bottom layer um and as i said please keep in mind these are all from perfect condition i kind of like things that have been used and loved and appreciated let's start with this one okay so isn't that pretty this is definitely an older tin you can kind of tell by the patina on the bottom um huntley and palmer limited reading made in England so it probably had biscuits in it and there is some uh, dents hopefully they're showing up and tape residue because um, you know they probably had the grandma probably had this labeled maybe it had buttons in it or something I don't I don't know um, and so we're gonna but today it has lace and trims and stuff so and as you can see the, the these are not perfect so I just kind of put stuff in here um, so there's pieces of lace and a couple vintage packaging. Look at this. Fruit of the Loom. I didn't know they made um, seam binding. Did you? How much fun is that? And some rights. And then, look, speaking of my childhood, girl, this little girl in the 70s, this is something like one of my grandmas would have put on a dress or something they made for me. And then here... Look at this. Someone lovingly measured this all out. I didn't have the heart to take the... So it's 115 inches or 3 yards and 7 inches. And it's just this purple, pretty... I think it might be seam binding, but I don't know. But it feels like it. And then just for funsies, I put in a couple wooden spools. Oop. And an old... Uh, they don't all have this. An old clothespin. This lace isn't that old, but it is cotton. Um, which I I love cotton lace and then we've got some pretty um, ribbon with the oh what's that embroidery machine embroidery what else we got so this is also another piece that was sewn I don't know what it's off of or what the plan was but it is machine made but it's still cotton and pretty um, oh now this is antique and this is handmade and someone salvaged this probably off of like that earlier tablecloth I showed you. Um, just gorgeous. Just think. Someone made that. And so much work. And then the, the fabric wears out. I'll get my finger in there. I'm having a hard time remembering about the screen, guys. I'm sorry. Um, and so you want to save the crochet to be used again another day. And this thing is long. There is a lot here. You could use this for a lot of projects. Or wrap it around a, a wooden bobbin or something. Um, and then these, I think, are cuffs, light lace cuffs. <laughs> Just how grandma is that? Um, like old timey grandma, like 1940s grandma. And then here, I think this is like for, I'm trying to show in the whole thing. It's like a triangle. Oh, and see, as I said, n these are not perfect things. This means you can use them for crafting because they're not perfect. Pretty little green doily. And once again, probably, yeah, see, big old flaw. Um, 
And here's another hand crocheted doily. And this is probably for the back of a chair, I'm guessing. And, oh, sorry. Oh, um, piece of a tablecloth or something. And, oh, look at this with the pansies. Ugh, it's so delicate. And just look at the age on that. And then some vintage hankies. So that is that one. I'm going to put it back together neatly. That's for later, right, guys? You don't need to watch me do that. So there's one. Seven more to go. So this one, Crawford Tartan Shortbread. Um, like some of the tape, probably what they sealed it with when it came with shortbread in it is gone. It has some masking tape. But come on, look at that plaid. Oh, I just love it. Um, and I just love how vintage the little Highlander guy looks. So this one's got some, I remember this one, this one's got some cool stuff. So got a little piece probably from like a, it was like for tablecloth that they were, you know, crocheting around. I don't crochet, so forgive me. Here's um, just this long, I think it's just probably an unfinished project that just look at all that yumminess. And we got um, a doily here. And I don't know what the story is of this. If it just needs to be ironed. Or maybe it was supposed to have something dangling like beads or something. Or go over a jar. I don't know. But it's pretty. And it's handmade. See, more eyelet. I told you I love eyelet. And this is old. I mean, this is probably antique. Um, judging by the patina and everything on it. And just the way it's made. The quality of the stitching um, around, like, all the flowers and stuff. Um, and then we got a bigger doily with some... Oh, I keep hitting that arm. I'm really sorry, guys. Um, big doily with flowers. And then just a white doily. And another um, close, old clothespin. And this lace is left over from one of the bobbins I showed you earlier. I had a little bit left, and it's just... Fun. And then here is a piece off a of runner. The runner was trashed. Um, but look at this with the fringe. Like, I just bought the Nick the Booksmith uh, carpet bagger course. And wouldn't this be fun? Like, on that cover, layered or whatever. And then a whole bunch of these little funky daisy. Uh, I think they cut these off of something. And this is how they sewed them on. So this pink might come off, or you can leave it. It's just kind of fun and funky. A little, this is not that old, probably from the 90s, a little lace applique. And then, this is fun. This is all hand sewn with teeny, teeny, look at those stitches, teeny, tiny stitches. And it's a heart. Can you see it all, guys? Isn't that pretty? Oh, and look, there's a bird. All right, so that is the Scottish Highland tin with that wonderful long piece of crochet and old eyelet lace and this tin has definitely seen some better days but isn't that awesome i love you just you know like it's all rusty and it's a little rusty on the inside also made in container made in england and it's kind of got some art deco lines so it could be from like the 30s or the 40s maybe as new as the 50s i don't know and it is hinged all right so what's in here We've got collar piece. Look at that. And the patina on these. You just, you know, you can coffee dye, but there's just nothing like the real thing. And then just a segment of crochet. An old hanky with some machine embroidery and um, drawn work. And this is newer. This is from the 90s, probably. A heart, a crocheted heart. Machine, uh, cotton, but machine made. And then another fun old crochet piece. And then here's a handmade crochet piece around a um, clothespin. My goodness, I just can't think today. And this, okay, this is Seen Better Days. This is tatting. And I believe it was, let's see if I can show you from this way, a baby bonnet. But as you can see, like the tatting is starting to come off. So I was thinking, wouldn't this be wonderful to, like you could save segments and reuse them um, or cut a whole section and um, use that in layering so pretty and that color and just all that work and here's another piece salvaged from something or other it, 
look at that laundry mark. I love that. Um, I don't know what it, probably a petticoat, I'm guessing, that this is from a petticoat. And look at all that dis discoloration. Awesome. Another just crochet piece, and see, some of it's a little loose. And here's more thicker, heavier crochet doily, but a really pretty crew color. Another part of that um, runner that has the, the fringes. Um, another antique handmade crochet piece. And then look at this one. I just love how delicate this is. Isn't that pretty? And <laughs> these are totally more of these little funky little appliques. This is a, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, it is kind of a random and then more salvaged crochet handmade antique crochet pieces. Um, just perfect for crafting. So there's that one. I gotta move along here. Take it too long. Oh, now this tin, I forgot to show it. So it's got some damage here. This one isn't as old because barcode, which means it's, and there's really no age to it. However, I love how it looks like Wedgwood and it has, like, it's like a reproduction. Yeah, see, it has all the ingredients on there, I think. So not old, but old looking. Old in style. So. This one has a nice big chunk of eyelet. I warned you guys, I like eyelet. And then here is some machine made, oh, sorry guys, lace trim. Here's the handmade antique crochet. Now, as you can see, there is some flaws or and or damage along here. So you can use it to your heart's content and not feel guilty. Cut it, bring, you know, whatever brings you joy. Um, look at that pretty old doily. I love them when the crochet is like this fine. A nice big thick chunky one. Such a great, uh, see there's threads on everything. So we got that one. And here's another doily. You can see round tin. I was inspired to put round things in there. Um, and then look at this pretty crochet. Look at all that work. <sighs> and some more. We got that one. Now we got this one. As I said, they're not all perfect. And then look at this pretty, pretty yellow eyelet. Oh, and this definitely has some age to it as well. Maybe the 1960s. I'm. It's just an educated guess. And then we got some hankies. We got polka dots. We got some florals. This one has some um, stains. But since these were blue and the tin was blue, not to be too literal, it just felt right. Um, this one doesn't have any embroidery, but it does have, it's such a pretty, pretty blue. And this is cut off a, um, this one, the crochet is not so old. I have a feeling that my grandma might have made this or bought it and put it on a pillowcase. She used to buy this stuff back in the 80s when no one appreciated it at estate sales and garage sales. And then so it, she even had it on her towels. Um, she just put it everywhere in her house. She would just sew it on stuff. More of the little daisies. Um, and then another, look at that, old crochet piece and an applique. So we'll stick that over there. Oh, we're moving along. Not halfway yet though. All right. This hankies and hosiery from Duluth, Minnesota. So it's got, as you can see, lots and lots of damage. Um, but this thing is old, 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 and I kind of dig the shabbiness. Um, I'm not a perfectionist by any means, and I just love it when things have been worn and loved and used and appreciated. Um, all right, and has little dividers. So, I also think this, I'll oh, see, this is, it's got a laundry mark, but I'm going to say probably from a pillowcase. Look at all that. Old crochet. So we got that one and a linen napkin with crochet on the corner and a doily and another. This one's probably not quite so old. Um, oh boy, everything has threads. Well, I guess that's the cost of being in a room with fabric and all that. Um, and see, like, here's someone. They, they crocheted it for a project and never did anything with it. I completely understand that. Um, 
a doily, but see it has some condition issues. And then we saw another in the thin fruit tin, this one. So, okay, so that's that part of the hanky box. And we've got a thick crocheted piece. I'm wondering if this is not finished. It may not be, I don't know. But the edges are finished, but maybe they planned on making it bigger. And then another piece of a crew. Fun to cut these little sections out. Oh, and speaking of, kind of like this, where you can just use that for layering. Some eyelet. Um, another handmade crocheted old piece on a clothespin, old clothespin. Um, some eyelet. And then all kinds of, I went, because I had a little section, it just was screaming for it. All kinds of little, like, little applique thingies in there. All right. Yeah, I gotta move it along. I still have three tins left, guys. Right? Can I count? I don't know. All right. This tin is totally from the 70s. Look how they are dressed. Early 70s, late 60s. So groovy. Um, and as you can see, it had been taped up at, to keep it closed. Um, the bottom doesn't have too much patina, but it does have some... The ingredients of what was in there is on the outside. Nabisco. So, souvenir of London. Sort of tea time biscuits. Lid comes off. So we've got two more clothespins with the crochet lace. Some of this really pretty gray eyelet. I don't know if someone dyed it or if it came that way from the manufacturer, but I just love that. Here's a piece from a pillowcase. Um, let's see if I go like this, you can see it a little better. With the pretty purple at the bottom, I thought it kind of matched that tin. Um, some more vintage seam binding. And this is a collar, but look at all the beadwork. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you guys are going to have so much fun with this, I hope. Um, here's a bigger runner and this I didn't wind around anything because it's a circle um, and I didn't want to cut it or anything so I just left that it's how it is some more old spools with the thread and I actually sometimes use this um, thread on my machine with my bobbins because why not um, Got that. Here's another doily. So there's a lot in here. This one's a nice big tin. See, I think this would be fabulous. I don't know. Like maybe on the side of a journal this way. Kind of like around the spine. I don't know. There seems like or maybe this way. I don't. Seems like it's got possibilities. Um, got a little, little mini. This is old, but I, you know, mass produced. Um, oh shoot, darn it. I can't remember what this kind of Battenberg, Battenberg lace. <laughs> I remember that one. That was all hot when my husband and I got married. That was like one of the looks. And then look at this with the flowers crocheted. And then you could just cut between them with your scissors and have like two pieces like this on the back, on the spine of a journal or something. Very cool. And then this is a little doily. It's got lots and lots of, look at that, so laundered and stuff you can see through it. Pretty crochet around there. And the embroidery is very faint, but there. It's like a little uh, Chinese lantern. And we've got another doily. And then this is all I have of this quilt. Isn't this cool? basket and look at the natural age and staining on that and then two blue hankies two tins left in the pile I see woohoo I'm getting I feel like I'm just talking and talking and talking I hope this video isn't too long guys forgive me if it is feel free to fast forward or do what you need to do Oop. all right this is another big one it's gonna take a couple minutes so this tin isn't as old either I'm guessing just from the design, it kind of screams 1990s when that Victorian, you know, Victorian romantic look 
Look at that. Oh, it had chocolate cookies in it. Yum, yum, yum. Um, but it's still very pretty. Just, you know, with the reproduction flowers and stuff. Oh, wait. Uh, nope. I thought maybe there was a date there. You know, Best Buy or whatever. But no. No luck. I lost my... Okay. So, we've got a bridal applique. And more of the old seam binding. This one has four of them. Kind of got that burgundy. I thought kind of went with the... And they have to have hunter green if it's from the 90s. I just remember when that was the hot, hot, hot color, baby. All right. And then, oh, wait. Look at this. Look at this old little spool. Oh, I can hardly even hold it. Um, Isn't that cool? Oh, I'm not even in frame. Sorry, guys. As I said, I'm just so new at this. Look at the details on that. So pretty. I mean, just even just having that on a shelf. Oh. I just love old stuff. Um... So we got a pretty doily. It's old, but I can tell it's ma mass produced. And this is just a piece from probably a tablecloth or something, but great for layering or cutting out. Oh, we've got thread from the bobbin. And then look how delicate. This is machine made, but definitely, definitely old. Um, So pretty. And got another doily. Two more clothespins with um, the old handmade crocheted lace. There's enough in here to keep you busy for a couple minutes. Um, look at this with the Rick Rack. I love Rick Rack. And look at that. Maybe I shouldn't put this in there. No, I'll share. I'm a grown up. I can do it. And oh, see, I've actually used some of this in my um, journals. So I thought it was time to share what was left. It makes a great tuck spot because it's kind of got this curve to it. Um, and it looks so pretty if you're doing like a vintage style journal. Got another fun piece. And another lace collar. Look at that. I mean, look at the ends or even, I mean, it's just so much scope for the imagination in here. Hopefully, if you make journals or so, um, you just, look how big this, you can't even see it. I mean, you can't even see it, it's so big. Um, this gives you lots of uh, inspiration for your projects. I mean, you could even just like layer some of these pieces and put them in a shadow box or something if it tripped your trigger. Oh, look. There's another one of those triangle pieces. As I said, I just kind of put stuff in here. I couldn't even remember what I put in there. I got the napkin, a linen napkin, um, pretty uh, rose, probably for the arm of a chair, maybe. Pink, gotta have some pink. And this one's not as old, but still very sweet. You could even dunk it in tea if you wanted to age it. Um, another one of these pieces. And this has definitely been loved and used. Look at all the um, age, natural age spots. And a pretty hanky. So 110 left. And then I got to figure out how to string all this together. And put it up on the YouTube and use technology. Oh my goodness. Okay, so last one. And this is like another English souvenir one at the Tower of London. And as you can see, someone had a label on it. It might come off with goof off. I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, has a little bit of age on the bottom. I just love how English these are. I don't know. Um, so more old seam binding. Don't you just love, I don't know. And this one with the stripes. So, and then we got more old th spools of thread with like the old little labels and stuff. Fun, fun, fun. And there another piece of machine lace that definitely, definitely, definitely has some age. This one is not as old, but it's this really fun tool. Um, see, it still has the netting underneath that you could have some fun with layering. Some more eyelid. Aha, uh -huh. look at this. This one's huge. Okay. Because the tin was big, you get a big piece. Now, this does have some condition issues, but look at all that wonderful crochet to play with. 
Oh, I don't know if you can see. It's got some stains and some damage. I don't know if there was patching down there. But still, a lot to play with with the bang. I couldn't, I didn't want to cut it because, you know, sometimes I cut stuff like this in half so everybody gets a piece. Oh, yeah, see, look at that big old hole. But with all this crochet along the edge, make sure I'm in frame. I hope, I hope most of this video I'm in frame. Oh, my goodness. Um... I just thought I'd leave that for the person that's going to use it to cut it. So you can get the most what you need for your project. I always worry about that. Like, I don't want to cut it. And then you're like, oh, if this was a little longer. It's been cut differently. I could have used it for this. So here's another long trim piece that somebody made. It's a little thicker crochet, but this thing is long. Lots of bang for your buck. And the collar that goes with the cuff pieces I had in another tin. Yeah, I broke the family up. Um, and here is another piece from a tablecloth that you can cut apart. And then you got to have one of these red doilies. I always love these. They always make me smile. Well, it might have been for a hot, you know, like where you put uh, what a, a hot pad. Because it's got this around there. But you can use it for anything you want because it's yours. And an oval doily and then got a green hanky that's vivid and then this one's just so groovy that I don't know English just felt like it needed to go in there I don't know why all right guys so I'm shooting for Tuesday but I will put for sure the dates and the times in the description once I know what I'm doing today's Father's Day so we're gonna go spend time with the dads with masks and social distancing and all that um, and I don't know I just, I always underestimate how long things are going to take me. So that's why I'm being cagey. I'm not trying to, I just don't want to say, oh, it's going to be Tuesday at this time. And then you log on and it's like, ah, did I miss everything? Did it sell? No, I don't know. So I will, when I know for sure, when I have my act together and I'm uh, trying to be realistic with my time frame, um, I will post the date and time and give everyone notice because I don't want anyone to miss out um, that would enjoy this. But the linens always seem to do really well for me in my shop. Um, so I wanted to give everyone a chance and an opportunity because this took a long time to put together. It's going to be a while before I do something like this. And again, I mean, I'm not saying I won't, it'll just be a long time. <laughs> so I hope you're all having a great day and let me know if you have any questions and those bobbins, if there's any interest in those bobbins, I have a lot of them. So I'm happy to put together a lot if people want to do this themselves, like, maybe buy one of these tins and then buy, ask me to put up a couple bobbins and then you could do that, you know, what I did at the beginning. So see you real soon. Bye.